No worries. Yeah, thanks for coming today. Um, I'm Detective Inspector Brett Featherby from Major Crime. Um, I'm here to provide information regarding the disappearance and suspected death and murder of Robert Atkins. Robert was a 29-year-old uh, man living in the southern suburbs. He had a keen interest in sport, uh, in particular football, basketball and cricket. He had an interest in cars. Uh, he, was good, he was quite good mechanically and enjoyed working on vehicles of um, that nature. <clears throat> Loved animals, uh, particularly dogs. He was reported missing by his mother on the 2nd of January this year, uh, when she had concerns for his welfare. Um, his mother became concerned when she hadn't had any contact with him since November 2020. As a result of that report, as a result of him being reported missing on the 2nd of January, Southern District CIB uh, commenced a missing persons investigation at which time major crime also assisted them with that uh, investigation. As a result, we identified that he'd had no phone use, uh, no bank account activity, he hadn't accessed any payments, and there was no recorded contact with Robert since the 12th of January, uh, sorry, 12th of November, 2020. Major crime detectives are now aware that uh, Robert has been murdered and his murder has been declared a major crime. Investigation to date has identified that um, he was actively involved in street level drug dealing in the southern suburbs. He was last known staying with friends at a premises at Manda Road at Christie's Downs. We're aware that he'd actually been staying at that house for only a short time. Prior to that he'd had regular, irregular contact with his family and he'd moved from house to house. Um, it, we believe that Robert's death is as a result of his involvement in, involvement in the drug scene in the southern suburbs. <clears throat> what we are aware of is that Robert was held against his will and assaulted for four to seven days prior to his death. Last night on the 22nd of July, Major Crime and Forensic Response Section attended and searched a premises at Manda Road at Christie's Downs. As a result of that forensic examination, there was presumptive forensic testing undertaken and as a result of that, we've seized sections of flooring from that premises. Those exhibits that have been seized and the flooring will be subjected to further forensic analysis um, <clears throat> in due course. What we can say is it's evident that when a person is held against their will, especially for a period of up to four to seven days, and assaulted and their body is disposed of, we know that there is more than one or two persons involved in his murder. Historically, um, we're aware that when offences of this type are committed, that they are generally solved because members of the public will assist and persons that have knowledge of they, their involvement or the others' involvement will assist the investigation. What are we seeking? Um, <clears throat> we're fully aware that people have knowledge to the background in relation to Robert's disappearance and subsequent murder. We're seeking anyone with that knowledge to come forward and speak to us about Robert's death. We're also aware that Robert may have had debts uh, as a result of his drug activity through the southern suburbs and we're asking that any persons with knowledge of that come forward and speak to investigators. Robert's mother and father, um, his mother lives in South Australia, his father currently lives overseas and we're seeking for people to come forward and do the right thing by his family and actually assist the investigation and give some closure to his dis disappearance and subsequent murder. What we are after is anyone that saw anyone acting suspiciously in early to mid-November in Manda Road at Christie's Downs. We're currently working on several lines of inquiry <clears throat> and we strongly urge anyone that has knowledge of Robert's death or anyone's involvement in his death to come forward and speak to police. Um, we ask that those persons are in Crime Stoppers tonight on 1800 333 000 to talk to detectives between 5pm and 9pm this evening. I'm now willing to take any questions. What do you believe happened in that, that week? I mean, what do you think they were doing to him? Were they torturing him or hurting him? Or what do you understand? What we can say is that Robert was held for four to seven days and we are aware he's been assaulted, but we won't comment further as to what's occurred during that period. How do you know that he was assaulted and was he only assaulted there or was he moved over the second day? We're aware he's been assaulted as a result of the investigation to date 
and I won't comment further as to whether he's been moved from that location to others at this time. Why was the floor taken? What was the, was there damage to the floor? No, there's been presumptive testing in that premises uh, by our forensic response team. As a result of that presumptive testing, um, there are areas on the floor that require further forensic analysis, which will be undertaken by the Forensic Science Centre, South Australia. Are the people in that house being treated as, as suspects, the people that are living there? I won't comment on that at this time. Are they cooperating with police? We have a number of people um, that we hope will cooperate with police. And we're, as I said, we're seeking anyone with information or knowledge to the background of Robert's death to actually come forward. The investigation is progressing well, and we are aware that people have that knowledge, so we actually ask them to come forward and speak to us. Has Robert's body been found, and has, has his family been reunited with his body? No, Robert's body hasn't been found to date. Um, and if anyone does have knowledge as to where Robert has been buried, um, we'd welcome them to come forward in these tragic circumstances to actually give closure to the family for that. Do you believe the body was disposed of in a, a close radius, or do you have any idea where, where it may be at this point? Um, we have a number of thoughts as to where Robert may be buried, but at this stage we won't comment on that. Was Robert known to police prior to his death? Yeah, Robert was known to police, um, but unlike many people of his age, he's got actively involved in the drug scene. Um, sadly for him and his relatives, that is the case. But even though he has been involved in the drug scene, that doesn't warrant what's occurred to him. Um, it's far too common now that people of that age group are getting involved in this, and there's no doubt that his involvement in the drug scene has led to his tragic death. Do you know what type of drugs or what level he was involved in? Was he dealing drugs? As I said, he was involved in street level uh, <coughs> the street level drug scene in the southern suburbs and that's only one part of the uh, picture that we're looking at and that will form part of the investigation and part of the motive going forward. So he owed money or had debts, how significant were they? From what we're aware of, they weren't significant. But unfortunately in the drug scene, you don't have to have significant debts for harm to come to someone. Do you believe there's any bias involved in this matter? At this stage I can say that there's no outlaw motorcycle gang involvement in this murder that we're aware of. You spent quite a, a lot of time at the house last night. Do you think that the evidence seized is significant? Yes, I do. And uh, I think it will certainly progress the investigation in coming weeks. Would you suggest anyone that right now is a good time to come forward? Yeah, as, as I stated earlier, um, the investigation is continuing very well. We do have very good lines of inquiry. And if there is someone that's been involved in Robert's death, even if it's only a small part, we actually ask that they come forward and speak to the police before we come and speak to them. Do you believe there were weapons involved? At this stage, I won't comment as to what's been used in relation to how he's been assaulted. There were reports that he was last seen at the Cove, at Hallett Cove. Is that still the same? That was the last time he was seen, was at that hotel? Um, that information I'm not aware of, um, but as said, we're aware that the last contact with him was on the 12th of November 2020 and during that early to mid-November period he had been held against his will and assaulted prior to his death. And is it just the one location that you're looking at or is there other properties that you think may have been involved? At this stage uh, there is the one and I won't comment as to whether we have knowledge as to whether there are other locations that we're looking at. So in terms of how many people are you believe are involved? Yes. It's clearly evident and history shows in offences of this nature it can't be committed by just one or two persons. You need a greater number of people to actually hold someone against their will, assault them and subsequently dispose of their remains. And how would you describe this sort of an act? It's tragic and for the level of involvement in the drug scene that people are actually involved in in this it's just a tragic set of circumstances where no one should find themselves in this position where their parents don't have answers as to what's occurred to them. And did you see any other items of interest yesterday or last night from the property? There were a number of items seized uh, from that premises, but I'll only comment and say that we've seized portions of flooring uh, for further forensic testing. And the 
time between when you believe he was taken by November 2020 and he wasn't reported until January this year. Did that, you know, impede an investigation into that Magapata? Um, when someone's always reported missing sometime after um, their death or their murder, it can hinder the investigation. Um, but on this occasion, it, it, uh, we're still very, very well placed to identify what's occurred and also have knowledge of who's been involved in this offence. <coughs> yeah, it's extremely difficult for his family. Obviously, his mother is here, his father is overseas. In the current climate, it's very difficult for his father to travel. So I can't even imagine the pressure it places on a family. I've never been in this position. Um, so I would say that it would be extremely difficult for his family and any relatives and close friends that he has.